Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s piercing critique of Kamala Harris strikes at the heart of authenticity in leadership and the pressing issue of corporate influence in politics. His words, carefully crafted to stir the soul and provoke thought, touch on the vital need for accountability and addressing deep-rooted institutional problems for the public good. You mentioned Kamala Harris is who you said that the Democratic Party appeared poised to put into that position. You were critical there, obviously, of, of President Biden's policy. What, if anything, is different? How do you compare yourself to Kamala Harris if she does become the Democratic nominee for president? Well, I think, you know, Kamala Harris is the party of war. She is uh, she's a war hawk. You know, the Democratic Party was always the peace party. Uh, Kamala Harris is a, a war hawk on Ukraine. She's a war hawk on, on China. I think that we should be figuring out ways to coexist with the rest of the world as best we can. Of course, we need to protect our national security. I think she's not going to do anything about the national deficit. I've never heard her speak about the chronic disease epidemic, about I think she's a product of the corporate control of our democracy. And she's one of the authors of, um, in, the, in terms of civil rights, she has one of the worst civil rights record of any public official. She's the author of the, uh, one of the primary authors of the school to prison pipeline. She kept 5,000 people despite a Supreme Court order that she released 5,000 prisoners and of nonviolent drug crimes who were illegally in California jails. She kept them in there saying that we needed them for firefighting and for other public work services. And that's just a, made, a modern version of indentured servitude, a modern version of slavery. Uh, she was the leading, one of the le two leading public officials in California, which now has the worst education system, 49th in education outcomes in the country. 50% of the homeless people in our country are in California, and she was behind those policies. Oh, I don't think she has a good, um, I don't think, in terms of the traditional democratic principles, I don't think she has a credible record. Kennedy's criticism paints a vivid picture of his concerns regarding Harris's political track record and ideological stance. He underscores her perceived deficiencies in progressive policies and effectiveness, portraying her as a staunch advocate for foreign intervention, a position that resonates with public unease over unnecessary military engagements and a desire for more measured foreign policy. Harris's association with maintaining inmates for public services epitomizes governmental overreach and inefficiency in Kennedy's eyes. Furthermore, his pointed remarks on California's educational and homelessness crises, areas he ties to Harris's influence, serve as a conservative critique of progressive policy failures. Kennedy's commentary on the authenticity and power dynamics within Harris's political sphere suggests that she's a product of corporate manipulation. Her actions, reflecting a broader concern about the erosion of individual agency and democratic integrity by powerful interests. Kennedy's dissection of Harris's civil rights record and involvement in the school to prison pipeline is a scathing indictment of her commitment to justice and equality. His words, charged with emotion, aim to destabilize her credibility by spotlighting her controversial decisions and failures. By highlighting these contentious issues, Kennedy seeks to ignite moral outrage and a sense of injustice among his audience, leveraging these sentiments to question Harris's suitability for high office. The public's reaction to Kennedy's critique is expected to be deeply divided along partisan lines. Harris's detractors find validation in his arguments, likely to expand on them in their discourse. Conversely, her supporters dismiss Kennedy's remarks as politically charged and lacking in fairness or context. Nonetheless, Kennedy's narrative on corporate control and chronic governance failures could resonate with disillusioned independents and progressives, potentially eroding some of Harris's support within these groups.